2024 just started and we already have multiple AI use cases that you need to know about. One of them is a little prompting trick to get hyper-realistic phone pictures from AI image generators. Another one is a really user-friendly way to run uncensored language models and many more locally on your machine without any coding knowledge required. One week ago, this wasn't as easy. And a few more, but let me start with the most interesting one because Microsoft just dropped their Copilot app. And some people are confused by this because they've been dropping bits and pieces of this throughout 2023. But now they united a lot of their products into one thing that they call Microsoft Copilot. It's free, you can use it as an app, it works on the phone, and we're gonna have a look at it right now. Because what this essentially is, is their best attempt at creating the ultimate virtual assistant for your personal life and work. If I had to summarize it, it's GPT-4 that integrates into all of your apps. So as you can see, you can access it in Teams, Outlook, Word, but it also comes as a standalone app on your Windows machine, phone, or even a MacBook. And how does this work out with the partnership with OpenAI? I don't know because this is free and it has GPT-4, DALI, Code Interpreter, and more. But I'm not here to ask questions. I'm here to show you what we can use today. So yeah, if I just go to the Mac App Store, there's a Microsoft Copilot app here. By the way, the same thing goes for my iPhone. It's actually number two in productivity and I could just freely download this and use it anywhere. And then even without logging in, I already have this interface that looks very familiar to what we saw with Bing. But this is better. Because as mentioned, it's this hybrid of Bing, GPT-4, and some of their other products. And what I personally really like is that they're taking some of the best features we've looked at, for example, in last week's Notebook LM by Google's DeepMind, like these prompt suggestions, and it just integrates them. So although I don't have to, I will sign in so I get longer conversations and a conversational history. And there we are. By logging in, I have access to this use GPT-4 toggle. And let's just start with one of the most basic questions. What can you do for me? And yeah, this feels a little weird, right? GPT-4 for free in all your apps? And hey, first attempt failed let me give it one more try and as you can see you have 30 messages that you can send here so it's not infinite but for free this is a real win for most people because gpt4 still to this date stands head and shoulders above most other language models and there you go some basic llm capabilities and you could be using it now and before we move on i want to point out a few things so first of all it does have vision and voice input which is amazing now, obviously, this is optimized for the phone, so it just pulls up my FaceTime camera here. But more importantly, it has some exceptional integrations that you don't even have inside of ChatGPT, like Suno AI. We also talked about it on this show about two weeks ago, but it's the best music generator that also does vocals right now, and it's integrated into Copilot right here. So as you can see what's happening here, they're bundling a lot of these products into one. You get the capabilities of GPT-4 with some of these other specialty app and Bing browsing all in one package that can travel from your phone to your Microsoft Teams account and it all integrates into one thing. And that just makes so much sense from a user perspective. So I would just recommend you try this out because this is where all of this is heading. Prompt suggestions and bundling of all these different AI apps into one. And here we have Microsoft's first version of that that is freely available. So really this is a first step, but I really like this first step because the main takeaway here is this is way more user-friendly than all the other applications that we've seen so far. Look at these prompt suggestions. I'll definitely keep my eye on this and keep you updated on new use cases for this. And here's another use case that actually isn't from this week. We've been developing this with my team over the course of the last six months. It's a ChatGPT business blueprint and it's the best way I have found so far to integrate ChatGPT into your work. So what we did here is create the ultimate bundle of 30,000 prompts and a thousand personas. That includes GPT presets, custom instruction presets and custom prompts for every single job role in here. And again, you have a thousand different job roles here. So no matter what your industry is, you will probably find a GPT that is similar to yours and this will allow to instantly tap into the AI capabilities. So it's a very deep product and as you can tell, I'm very proud of it, but we were able to simplify to three steps, okay? So number one is you pick an assistant from the extensive library of a thousand of them across many categories. In step two, you have to copy paste for 30 seconds. It comes with tutorial videos that show you exactly how to do this. And in step three, you just let AI do the work for you. Everything has been set up for you. All you need to do is copy paste and you'll get better results than you've ever received from GPT-4. It's very extensive, but I designed it to be beginner friendly and there's no risk to trying it. It comes with a 14 day money back guarantee and me and the team use this ourselves regularly. So go ahead and get your ChatGPT business blueprint today to get more out of AI for your work. Okay, next up we have the Olama Mac app. And as of now, this only works for Mac and Linux. Windows is coming soon. But what Olama allows you to do is you can run language models locally on your machine. Now, this was possible before, but it was not so easy because all you need to do now is you go to this link that is in the description of this video. You say download for Mac OS. And then by double clicking the icon inside of the zip folder, I can move this to applications. And here we go, a super simple installer. I'll just say next. 
install and then all you need to do is open up your terminal and copy paste this one message you'll be able to do this you just paste this in here and hit enter and now it's really simple to install some of these models because if you just go up here to models you can pull any one of these okay so free that i would recommend this llama 2 that's an open source one by meta it's very similar to gpt 3.5 then mixtral which is a super popular model recently because it uses a mixture of experts we also talked about this but this is probably the go-to if i had to just pick one from here and then if you want to have some fun you can take dolphin mixtral which is a version of mixtral that is completely uncensored we talked about this a few weeks ago you guys love the idea of uncensored llms so yeah there you go if i just copy this command all I need to do is open up the terminal on my computer and look again no coding knowledge required I just paste this and hit enter and it will install the dolphin model locally on my machine easy peasy lemon squeezy takes a while as you can see this one has 26 gigabytes llama 2 for example only has three but there you go this is the simplest way to install them yourselves if you want a full video showing you how to get the most out of this leave a comment below but for now let's move on to the next use case which is all about hyper-realistic photos that you can create with Midjourney. So this is just a simple keyword that you can include in your prompts, but the results are a bit too good for comfort. Look at this. AI Breakfast shared some of these pictures that are created inside of Midjourney. 99% of people could not tell that these are AI generated, right? There's just no way. Now, some of us power users will immediately zoom in on the hands and they'll be like, oh, what's up with this thumb over here? And what's this all about? That's still a giveaway, right? Look at these fingers over here. Yeah. But if you zoom out and view this on your desktop, that's not the first thing a human eye goes to intuitively. Midjourney V6 got way better with the hyper-realism, but it compromised a bit of its hands. In V5, the hands were a little better than they're right now. So how do you recreate this yourself? Well, you just use the phone photo keyword. And then also Chase Lean has another thread here, which talks about using a bit of a different prompt. He uses posted on Snapchat. Or here he uses posted on Reddit in 2019. And then it will use the training data from Reddit pictures in 2019, which makes it look super realistic. I wonder what happens if I say a cat with a hat, phone photo, because by using version 6, they should look like a realistic iPhone picture. And there you go, you get hyper-realism. And then quickly I'll do a woman walking her dog in a park full of trash, phone photo, and yep, there you go, this is scary good. So now you know how to replicate it, and at the very least, now you're aware that the AI images have become so good that no mere mortal can tell anymore. Super quickly, another mid-journey use case, you can create these GTA-style loading screens. And interdimensional.tv created these. They work with all celebrities because Midjourney 6 can do that reliably now. But he did not share his prompt. So I just went ahead and recrafted this myself. So you essentially just pick any character here in the beginning. Then say in GTA 5 style loading screen. Stephen Bliss illustration 1980s Grand Theft Auto. Prompt in the description. And there you go. A super quick technique on how to replicate the visuals of the world's most popular computer game. Okay so the next one is a bit weird. But bear with me because people are experimenting with AI music like crazy. And this little music gen remixer actually allows you to take songs and move them from one genre to another. Now, is it perfect? No. Nowhere near close perfect. But it's a first look at a future that is just very different from what we have today. Now, the preset example here works super well. On Twitter, you have Ryan Hoover remixing Childish Gambino's tracks into different styles. But what I did here is I took this Japanese pop song, I guess, and I just simply prompted liquid drum and bass. And it's not perfect. I'm not even sure this is liquid drum and bass. But if you're into music and audio, I think this is really worth getting a feeling for us. These things will only get better from here on out. So look at that. This is the before. The cover is so like you a little, don't and then this is the after. So this would be the one for this week that is really fun to play with. But what it essentially does is it splits the music into the different stems and then rearranges them and adds new AI generated music underneath. I mean, just think about a future where you take your favorite artist and all of a sudden you're going to be able to regenerate their album in every genre imaginable. K-pop Michael Jackson or U2 Techno. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever your heart desires. It's gonna happen. It's just a question of time. So if you want me to cover any of these use cases more in depth, leave a comment below. Otherwise, subscribe because I'm doing this on a weekly basis, showing you what new things AI can do that you can actually put to work today. And right here, you can check out last week's video and I'll be here every Friday for the rest of 2024.